man, it's been a challenging couple of weeks, month or so. And, you know, a thing I've been wrestling with or something that, you know, was on my heart is that it's one thing to know the Bible, right? You know, a lot of people, especially on YouTube or fashion themselves, preachers, prophets, many other things spiritually in the church, you know, playing roles, preacher, prophet, bishop, apostle, deacon, serving many offices and, you know, many people in many different leadership roles. Now, the thing is, and the reason why I'm making this video is that it's one thing to have informational knowledge, right? We know that God is good because the word tells us that God is good. We know that God can heal you because the word tells us that God can heal us. We know that God will provide for us because the word tells us that God provides for us. Everything that, okay, I can't say everybody, but some people, and this, I'm of that some people category, everything that we know about God, we know because we read it, right? So we have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have faith. And our faith is only bolstered more and more by what we've read because we believe what we've read. And that's the substance of those things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? See, the thing is, there's another level to it, and that is the experience. And that's something I've been, let's be honest, I've been complaining about it lately. Because it's like, I know that God is good. I know that God can turn the situation around, but I haven't seen God turn the situation around. Not in my life. You know, I, I don't care to see it. I don't care to see it um, second, second in second person or third person, right? I don't care to see it from a, uh, that point of view while well, I see it happen for this person because I, I feel like the same way when I imagine it, you know, when I'm reading my word and I'm seeing the, when I'm reading the epistle of Peter or the epistle of James or the epistle of John, I'm reading all of these gospels and things and I can see the experiences that they've had with Jesus or with God or, you know, with Daniel and the lion's den and all these many experiences, you can see that because of their experience, that's what they've written. And this is what they believe about God. That's all the Bible is. Experiences about God or with God, right? It's not the informational knowledge, but it becomes informational knowledge to us because we haven't experienced God in that way. I haven't been thrown in a lion's den and had an angel shut the lion's mouth. I haven't been threatened to be burned, right? I haven't been thrown into the fiery furnace like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but I can try to preach it. Right. It doesn't it doesn't hit the same way. It didn't hold the same weight because I don't have the experience of God that I'm preaching. I'm talking about it. I believe God for it, but I've never been in that situation to see God come through in that way. Therefore, there's another level of faith that I haven't got to. I can read all the Bible I want. And that goes for any of us. We can read all the Bible that we want. We can have all the scriptures, all the, the Hebrew, the Greek memorized, every religious text that ever came out. But if we don't have that experience with God ourselves, our personal testimony, what is it worth? And our personal testimony, like I know even me with my YouTube, I have a video up of my testimony, of, you know, a, por a portion of my testimony. And this is what I'm going to get into as well, because our testimony is constantly being written. Our, our testimony is not over. Like think about Paul. Was Paul's testimony that he killed Christians, but then Jesus knocked him off the horse and he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That's some of our testimony. That's some of our YouTube videos. God saved me from pornography. Knowing darn well, two or three years later, you went back to that same sin because you're human and you're susceptible to weaknesses. The same weaknesses that you were susceptible to before, you're still susceptible to now. You just understand things a little differently, right? So that's not necessarily your testimony. Our testimony is constantly being built. Our testimony is going to be really our obituary once we're dead and gone and what people remember us by. All the things that we've seen God do over all that, that period of time, not just this five years where I first saw God do this or God changed my mind about this or God increased my faith in this area. But the fact that I went to this level, that I went to this level and I went from faith to faith and glory to glory, as the word tells us. And because I've experienced faith to faith and glory to glory, that's my testimony. But that can only be finished and complete when I'm done living. After all experiences have been had, after I've seen God work in miraculous ways, and he's done all he wants to do through my life. Because we believe that we never die until God calls us home. And God ain't going to call you home with the work incomplete. So if I'm dead, then that means God has done all he's going to do through my life. Therefore, that is my testimony. But I can't give it. Somebody else has to give it. Somebody else close to me that watched me go through these things. And the stories that's passed down through the the older, the, the, the younger generations that come after us, they're to be the ones that's going to give us our testimony. 
And therein lies that experience with God that no matter how many videos I make, no matter how much scriptures I, I exegetically pull from the Bible and they try to tell you and teach you about, there's something missing. And that's that experience. I want that experience. I don't want to hear, I don't want to keep talking about God can and God will. And if you just believe all that's true, but I want to see something, <laughs> you know, I, I need to see something. And that's part of the reason, really about 70% of the reason why I haven't made any videos. I don't have any, there's no more to say as, as far as, you know, the Bible being wide and vast and there's much knowledge in it. That's true. But because I don't have that experience, I don't have a desire to just get up here and just start talking for nothing. You know, it has to be, it has to, it has to, it has to strike a, a hunger within me. It has to strike a desire. I have to want to do this. I don't have no desire to be no preacher. I don't have no desire to be no speaker. But if I have something that's useful to the people and it changed my life, I want to tell you as many people as possible. But I ain't had that in a while. It's just reading the same Bible over and over, you know, getting them same stories, getting them down, seeing new details. But at the end of the day, without that personal experience, there's something missing. Right. And that's what I want to see. So I'm going to put it out here in public. This is what I want to see. And this year we at the tail end of 2021. We're going into 2022. We coming off a, of, you know, a pandemic, whatever. It seems like we're transitioning out of that season. Hopefully that's what's going on prayerfully. And, um, and this next year, all I want to see is experiences. I don't want to sit up here and spend another year. All I have to, to say is that I read my Bible more or I understand Bible stories better. I want to be a Bible story. Yeah, I don't want to read about Aaron and Moses. I want to serve my role as an Aaron or a Moses in somebody else's life or in somebody's, you know, in a certain, in a, in a position. I want to serve my part. I want to do my part. I don't want to just talk about it. I want to be about it. I want to live about it. Right. And that's what I've been doing these last, you know, few months, a couple doors open and I've just been walking by experience. That's why I don't really have time to be getting on here making videos as much. But if you want to look for me or you want to, you know, wonder why I haven't been as consistent recently. Well, this is why, you know, so when we get some new stuff to talk about, some new experiences to document, then yeah, we'll be back. But for now, this is what I have. And this is what I've been thinking on these last few months and what I've been trying to live out. So uh, in Jesus name, I pray that that will bless you. I pray that that will get you to start thinking about those kind of things, because just having knowledge about God is nowhere near the same as having knowledge with God or having an understanding of God. Because I went through this situation and God came through in that situation to let me know that this is who God is, that God is a keeper because God kept me, that God is a provider because he provided for me, that God is a healer because he healed me. Not God is a healer because he healed Jacob. I will never see Jacob in my life. Not God is a provider because he provided for the 5,000 or the 4,000. I'll never see those people. I'm here now. I need God to provide now. I need God to heal now. I need God to serve now. You know, I need God to supernaturally do things now. And when he do those things now, then I'll be back here to document them things with you and share my testimony once again and again and again, you know, that you may see that what God has done in my life currently, God can do in your life because it's still possible. So... In Jesus' name, be blessed.